Hi everyone, I'm Eric Fritz with INE Technologies. We're a reliability equipment supplier specializing in vibration, ultrasound, infrared alignment, uh, motor circuit analysis, as well as many other PDM technologies. Uh, we also supply training uh, for the implementation of all of our products, which is the reason for our video series. Uh, if you have any feedback or any other product videos you'd like us to cover, feel free to reach out to us at any time. You can find us at our website, www.ietechnologiesllc.com. Uh, if you have any interest in the products that we're supplying, we can also help with that. Thank you, and I hope you enjoy the video. Today we're going to be covering the EX series from FLIR. That's our E4, E5, E6, and E8 cameras. Uh, the main difference between each of those is infrared resolution or pixels. That's the amount of spots that we can measure on the camera. Just like a digital camera, that's essentially what you pay for when you buy the camera. So the more resolution, typically the higher the price. And you have four options in this family of cameras. The, the body style, the camera itself, is very, very simple to operate. It's designed to be a point-and-shoot style, meaning there's no focus mechanism. There's very few on-screen or on-camera analysis functions. Yes, you can do a lot more from the software than you can from the cameras, but in comparison to some of our higher-end cameras, it's limited. But in that manner, it's a lot easier to use uh, and a less complicated to operate. Um, on the camera itself, again, no fo no focus mechanism. They call it a focus-free camera. What you see is what you get. Um, we also have a lens cover that rotates here to close and open. Highly suggest you close it when you're putting it in uh, any kind of carrying case or you're not using it. Uh, it's an important part of the camera, so you're going to want to keep dust and, and grit and grime and um, your fingers off of it so it does not get scratched or damaged over time. Uh, coming down is our image capture button, uh, so that'll capture both our visual and infrared when we hit that. Obviously when the camera's on, which mine is not. On the very bottom, I have my battery. You're going to pinch each side and pull out to remove the battery. There's two in the case, um, typically two to three hour battery life on those, give or take some of the, uh, the settings on your camera and how often you're pushing buttons. Uh, usually about two and a half hours with with those batteries on top of the camera here is our uh, memory latch uh, Most of our cameras have an SD card. This is an internal memory style So several thousands of images we can store before we need to dump or remove Any of those images. It's just going to be a micro USB to USB connection Which comes with the camera uh, depending on when you purchase yours you may or may not have Wi-Fi on yours. Uh, that was added, I believe, in 2015 or 2016 uh, for image importing to a phone or a tablet uh, of some some kind, so you don't need to hardwire it to a PC to, rem um, to move images. Uh, so depending on the camera model, the firmware, and when it was purchased, you may or may not have that function available to you. As we get to the EX series camera screen itself, the camera is designed for one-handed operation. There is no touch screen on the EX series, so everything is done via the center toggle up and down, left and right, and center select buttons right here on the camera. So we go center select, left, right, up, and down on the toggles. Our playback button here to look back on our captured images, what's saved on the camera, you're going to tap this button and it will bring up uh, what you have stored on the camera, both visual and infrared uh, images. If you hold that down for longer than a second, it's going to perform a non-uniformity correction, uh, a nuke of the camera, an instantaneous calibration. Over here on the right, if we get into any menu options, that's going to be an escape key or a back button. Uh, if we're going through settings or we get into a menu, the back button is going to back us out to the main screen where we can capture images. And then on the bottom right, simply, is going to be our on-off. Try and avoid to turn the camera off um, by pulling the battery out. It's really not designed to do that. It's not good for the camera. Uh, you're going to hold that button down to turn it off, hold it on. 
for about a second or so to turn it back on. As we get into the screen of our EX series camera, there's a couple things we notice right away before I get into the menus at all. On the top left corner, we have a number that's kind of changing. Uh, that's our spot measurement. So the center fixed spot on the camera, it's being displayed in the top left corner. Any measurement mode that we put on, whether that be a, a fixed spot or a hot or, co hot or cold spot box, uh, that'll be adjusted and displayed in the top left corner. On the right hand side, we have our level and span or our temperature scale. That is in auto scale right now. So as I move the camera around, you can see those numbers are changing slightly. Uh, there's a way that we can lock the camera uh, so that those numbers stay at a certain interval. Um, but I will show that shortly. And what that's doing, why that's important to us, is that's, uh, that's auto adjusting to the hottest and coldest thing that the camera is seeing. And the wider that scale gets, the more spread out our colors get. As we tighten that scale down, it's going to amplify a lot of our thermal contrast. So uh, we want to try and keep that level and span around a target uh, target temperature that's important to us. So we don't want to have you know, a, a low-end scale at 50 degrees and a high-end scale at 400 if we're just looking at a motor because there's no way there should be any motor near 400. As we bring that top-end temperature down, you're going to see that our, our colors will start to pop a little bit more and the detail won't be so washed out. So again, make sure you have the appropriate level and span. I'll show you how to adjust that shortly. Uh, getting into the menus, you got to hit the center toggle again to pop up any menus or to select any menu menus like this uh, because it is not a touchscreen camera. You can see as I select that in the top left-hand corner next to our spot measurements, we have a couple icons. The first one being battery life. The next one is our uh, memory card capacity and how much we've had taken up. And the next one over is our Wi-Fi. It looks like my wi my Wi-Fi is off on this camera. Um, I can turn it on simply in the menus, which I will get into shortly. Um, but that'll be brightened up or lit up if it's on, which it is not right now. Uh, if I want to get into my menus down here on the bottom portion of the screen, I have settings, image mode, our measurements, color palettes, and our temperature scale adjustment, which I was just talking about. And starting from the left, we'll get into settings. Our, our three options in here initially is our measurement parameters uh, for start, which is going to be uh, our emissivity, our reflected temperature, our target distance, or the distance that we are from our target. All of those things play a part into uh, how, our, how accurate our temperature measurements are going to be based on uh, the material that we're trying to measure. Uh, the next button down, or the next menu down is our save options. Um, not much in there that we need to worry about. And our device settings is in this next menu over. As I get into that, uh, we have a lot of different adjustments to make. If we click the top one, this is this is going to be our language setting, uh, our temperature units, you know, Celsius to Fahrenheit, meters to feet, all the pretty self-explanatory stuff here. I don't want to get into it too much, so I'm going to back out. Wi-Fi. Uh, this is where we would turn on Wi-Fi uh, right now. I have it sharing, but I have not connected to it on any mobile device. Um, so all I would need to do is go into my Wi-Fi settings on a can or on my my cell phone or tablet and connect to the IR Cam 3832 device, and it should connect to it and allow me to import images and things like that. Take instantaneous snapshots from my phone or tablet. Next menu down is a reset options. If you have any issues with the camera, a lot of times the factory will ask you to do a camera reset. Um, don't suggest doing that unless somebody tells you to do it. Um, that's kind of a last resort before we send in any cameras for, for service. Uh, auto power off is our next one down. Um, I do that for my demo cameras. If I forget to turn them off, they'll be, uh, battery will be drained by the next time I get to an appointment. Our display intensity, this kind of plays a part into battery life, so if you don't need the high intensity on, feel free to change that. Uh, demonstration mode, not something you're going to need. Camera information, uh, this is our serial number, our software, the storage that we have, lens, uh, lens degree, um, our battery life, things like that, and then some regulatory information. As we back out again, we're going to go back into live mode and hit the next menu over, which is our image modes. 
We're in a standard thermal mode right now. If I scroll over to the left, this is our patented thermal MSX feature, which is a uh, multi-spectral dynamic imaging, which would allow us to overlay details from the visual image or the digital image over the top of our infrared image. So if we don't have a lot of thermal contrast on the screen, it will show a lot of detail from the visual image so that we can help identify what it is that we're looking at. Um, so if we want breaker numbers like we have on the screen right now, or if we were looking at a motor and we needed nameplate information, uh, manufacturer info, things like that, it's a really neat feature to have. Obviously, when we capture these images, we're going to have a digital images, image to refer back to anyways, but it's still a nice feature to have. Our alignment distance is simply adjusted based on how far we are from the target. Because the camera is focus-free, the alignment distance helps kind of line up our, our two images for our overlay feature. As I scroll over to the right, we have picture-in-picture, picture, also a very neat feature. Again, if we don't have a lot of thermal contrast, if I were looking at a painted drywall, I don't know that I'd be able to tell what I was looking at. So if I use picture in picture, I can look around the outside and it's going to show it in di uh, digital or visual. And then in the center part of the screen will be an infrared. Nice feature to have. The next one over is thermal blending. It's kind of swapping between visual and infrared. And the last one over is our digital camera. Not much use for that uh, because we do capture both the visual and an infrared when we hit the image capture button. Scrolling over to measurements, this is where we're going to have our spot measurement mode. So our center fixed spot is what we have when we turn the camera on into live mode. We scroll over to the right. This is a very neat feature. And again, this is one of those things that you may or may not have on your camera depending on the model and depending on when you bought it. This was something they standardized on a few years ago. Uh, again, about the time they added Wi-Fi, they added the hotspot and cold spot detection box on the cameras. So this hotspot right now is jumping to the hottest thing in the little center box here and displaying that temperature in the top left. Very neat feature to have if you open up a, a breaker panel or again, looking at a motor or, or something else, you wanna know the hottest spot that we're looking at right away. Instead of using a center fixed spot like this, to try and locate that hot spot. I can't find it, you know, I'm 90, 91 degrees, something like that. If I if I go back to that hot spot box, again, it's gonna automatically jump to it and display that temperature. So it's kind of a time saver. Um, alternatively, we have a cold spot box, uh, can be used for refrigeration, looking for leaks, things like that. Um, but again, you have both features. If you wanna clear the screen of any measurements, you can go to that, the next menu over. Bringing our menus up again, we have color palettes. This is really going to be user preference. Um, depending on who you're sending the, the images to, people like color, and the color kind of helps visualize temperature. So we can go along here and pick the, the uh, color palettes that are best for us or for our customer or our managers or management. Um, a lot of people like the grayscale. Um, if you have any issues with seeing colors, grayscale is a great a great color palette for you. Uh, some of the color palettes have more contrast in them, but it's really user preference. I, I like using grayscale and iron depending on the application. The next one over is below alarm. Uh, this is kind of in line with um, our, our cold spot detection. We can adjust this interval on the top part of the screen. You can see that 66.9. We can go up there and toggle down and adjust that alarm. And basically what it's gonna do is show anything below that interval in blue. So if we're looking for leaks and we know a cold air leak might be at 52 degrees, we can adjust that to 52 degrees. And as we scan a pipe or a hose or whatever it is, it will jump out as soon as we see blue. That means that we're below the threshold that we have chosen. If we go over one more, above alarm is the exact opposite. So if we know that uh, a problem on a motor might be 125 degrees Fahrenheit. We can adjust that interval or that alarm to 125 degrees and then go along each motor in a line. And if any of them show up red, you know that you have an alarm exceeded. So it's, again, kind of a time saver. Uh, depends on the application you have, but it's just another feature we have on the camera. All these color palettes and spots and image modes on board the camera, as I mentioned earlier in the video, you have even more in the software. So I highly suggest you go on 
uh, on the web and download either FLIR Tools, FLIR Tools Plus, or one of our other softwares. Uh, most of them are free. Uh, you can go on there, take our images, and do a lot more manipulation with them and analyzing than you can on the cameras. If I go down one more here, I have temperature scale, and this is where we would go from our auto, where it's auto adjusting here on the right side to the manual. So right now, if I go to manual, you can see that I have arrows on the top and the bottom. And what that's going to do is it's going to lock our, our interval, interval at 25, 35, whatever degrees we have chosen on here. Um, and if I want to slide that up, I'm going to toggle up. And you can see how the colors are changing. I can slide down. And again, the colors are changing. If I want to widen or tighten that span, I can toggle to the left. And as I do that, you can see the bottom grays out. Now the arrows are on the top. So I can widen my span or I can tighten it. And when I tighten it, you're going to see a little bit more contrast. But again, it's all about selecting a span that works best for you. And again, if we want to toggle down to the bottom, we're going to hit left one more time. And we can widen that or bring it up to meet the upper end. And by doing that again, you're going to see that you're going to get a little bit more contrast. Uh, but again, it's kind of up to you to visually find uh, what what temperature scale or what level and span interval makes sense for the application. If you want to go back to the auto, just simply select a few times here back into the auto mode and you're all done. Other than that, that's basically all we're going to have on the camera. Again, it's designed to be a very simple uh, operation, um, not overly in-depth. You know, there's a lot of other things that we can do with this in the software. So again, highly recommended you look at FLIR tools um, to be able to, to really amplify the features on the camera because all of the, the images that you take, whether I take it in infrared or I take it with the MSX or the, the center fixed spot, all of those things can be changed from the software. So if we dump any of the images that we've stored into our FLIR tool software, we can do a lot more analysis adjusting our level and span, changing color palettes, changing our spot temperature measurements, um, all of our image modes. If I took the image in infrared, but I wanted to send it over in a report uh, in that MSX overlay mode, I can, I can do that afterwards. Those are all radiometric data details uh, that can be changed from the software. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to subscribe and hit the like button below. For technical support, product information, or if you'd like to understand how INE Technologies can help you, please visit our website or reach out to us directly. Thanks for watching.